In this module, we will cover the electrical system of the ATR. We will start out with a brief system description. Following the system description, we will cover the DC system, the AC system, the AC wall system, and external power. Finally, we will review the controls and indicators associated with the electrical system. The electrical system on the ATR consists of the main and emergency batteries, two engine-driven DC starter generators, and two AC wall generators. AC and DC electrical power can also be supplied via external power units. Receptacles for the AC and DC external power units are located on the right side of the fuselage, on the first officer's side of the nose gear. Two static inverters can convert DC power into AC power at a constant frequency. When operating, the inverters will power the respective AC bus. The DC electrical system can be powered by the AC wall generators through a transformer rectifier unit, or TRU. This TRU converts 115 volt AC into 28 volt DC power. The electrical system is divided into the left and right networks. These two networks normally operate independently, but can be connected together through bus tie contactors in the event of a failure. The controls and indicators for the electrical system are found on the main electrical power control panel located on the overhead panel. A simplified schematic of the electrical system is etched into the panel. Synoptic displays of the electrical system can be seen on the multifunction display, or MFD. Most of the AC and DC components of the electrical system are displayed on the electrical page. The AC wild part of the electrical system is displayed on the AC wild hydraulic page. There is an indicator panel located on the captain's lateral maintenance panel. DC voltage and current can be checked by means of a rotary selector. This panel is normally used by maintenance, and is protected with a transparent cover to prevent operation of the panel while the aircraft is in flight. The electrical system logic is controlled by the bus power control unit, or BPCU. Two independent BPCUs control the AC and DC systems, one for each system. The BPCU controls the configuration of the electrical system via the DC and AC wild bus tie contactors, the battery start contactor, load shedding through the utility bus contactors, AC and DC external power control functions, as well as the DC and AC wild service bus contactors. The 28 volt DC system is normally powered by two engine driven starter generators, or an external ground power unit. Two batteries provide a source of power for emergencies, or for when the aircraft is on the ground, without the engines running and no external ground power unit. The DC distribution system consists of a hot main battery bus and hot emergency battery bus, two main buses called DC bus 1 and DC bus 2, a DC emergency bus, a DC essential bus, a DC standby bus, two utility buses, a DC service bus, and a ground handling bus. DC Bus 1 and DC Bus 2 are normally powered by their respective generator. The aircraft operating manual lists all the systems powered by the DC buses. The DC Emergency Bus and the DC Standby Bus are normally powered by DC Bus 1 through the Hot Emergency Battery Bus. If one of the two batteries has a thermal runaway, the battery charge contactor will open, and the associated bus will be transferred to DC Bus 1. If DC Bus 1 is not powered, then a main bus transfer contactor will close, which will cause the associated bus to be powered by DC Bus 2. If neither DC Bus is operating, the DC Emergency Bus and the DC Standby Buses will be powered by the Transformer Rectifier Unit, or TRU, if it is operating. The TRU converts AC wild power into DC power. This will be covered later in this module.
If the TRU is not operating, then the DC emergency bus and the DC standby bus will be powered by the hot emergency battery bus. The DC essential bus is normally powered by DC bus 2 through the hot main battery bus. Again, if the battery has a thermal runaway condition, the DC essential bus will be powered directly by DC bus 1 if it is operating. If DC bus 1 is not operating, the DC essential bus is powered by DC bus 2 through the main bus transfer contactor. Two utility buses power non-essential loads. These utility buses are powered by their respective DC bus through a utility bus contactor. These contactors are controlled by the BPCU. These utility buses are automatically shed in the event of an overload of the DC buses. There are two batteries on the aircraft. One battery is called the main battery, and the other is called the emergency battery. The main battery is a 24 volt Nikad battery which is rated at 43 amp hours. The emergency battery is a 24 volt Nikad battery that is rated at 17 amp hours. The main battery is normally used for engine starting. This battery is also a source of emergency power. The emergency battery has two functions. Its primary function is to ensure that the emergency electrical network is powered, even if the main battery is depleted. This could occur if an engine fails while in flight, and multiple restart attempts deplete the main battery. The second purpose of the emergency battery is to prevent power transients on critical equipment during engine starts. The emergency battery does not supplement the main battery during engine start. The multifunction computer, or MFC, monitors the status of the batteries. If either battery requires charging, the MFC will connect the affected battery to the associated DC bus to allow it to charge. In addition, the MFC will monitor the charge current and the associated DC bus voltage to prevent a battery thermal runaway condition, or an abnormal battery operating condition. Each battery is connected to an associated hot battery bus. One bus is called the hot emergency battery bus, and the other is called the hot main battery bus. As the name implies, these hot buses are always powered as long as the associated battery is charged. It should be noted that under normal conditions, the hot battery buses are normally supplied by the DC buses. The hot emergency battery bus is powered by DC bus 1, and the hot main battery bus is powered by DC bus 2. When the DC system is operating normally, the items powered by these buses will use normal DC power instead of battery power. The voltage and current of each battery can be checked on the captain's lateral maintenance panel by placing the selector knob to the battery main or emergency position. These two indicators read the information from the associated hot battery bus. A ground handling bus is connected to the hot main battery bus through a battery transfer relay, or BXR. If the main battery is charged, the battery transfer relay will close if the cargo door operating panel door is opened, if the refueling panel access door is opened, or if the entry door is opened. Once the relay is closed, the ground handling bus will be powered by the main battery. The battery transfer relay will close under the specified conditions regardless of the position of the battery switch. The ground handling bus is also powered when external power is available. When external power is available and of acceptable quality, the external ground handling relay closes and the battery transfer relay opens. This will cause the external power supply to power the ground handling bus through the DC service bus, provided the flight attendant ground service bus push button is in the on or pressed in position.
You should note that the powering of the ground handling bus does not require external power to be selected on. The ground handling bus powers items to service the aircraft while the aircraft is on the ground. The ground handling bus provides DC power to the fueling controls and indicators, and the cargo door control and indicators. Since these are not required in flight, the ground handling bus is de-energized when the aircraft is in flight. The DC service bus applies power to the galleys, lights, the lavatory system, and the auto feather pump manual control. This last feature is used to perform tests when the aircraft is on the ground. The DC service bus is powered either by DC bus 1 or external power. If external power is available, the power to the DC service bus is controlled by the ground service bus DC push button located on the flight attendant panel. When this push button is depressed, the DC service bus is powered through the service bus transfer in A. Click on the ground service bus DC push button to power the DC service bus. If DC bus 1 is powered, then the DC service bus is controlled by a switch on the overhead panel labeled DC service utility bus. This button gives the flight crew master control of the ground service bus DC push button on the flight attendance panel. When the engines are not running, the DC system can be powered by the battery system. The battery toggle switch is used to power various DC buses using battery power only. Click on the battery toggle switch to continue. When the engines are not running and external power is not available, the on position of the battery toggle switch will supply DC power from the hot main battery bus to the DC essential bus through the hot main bus transfer contactor. In addition, the hot main battery bus powers the DC standby bus through the standby bus transfer contactor, and inverter 1 through the hot battery transfer contactor. In addition, the hot emergency battery bus will supply DC power to the DC emergency bus through the hot emergency bus transfer contactor. This configuration is known as basic mode. If external power is plugged in, the available caption will illuminate if the BPCU determines that the power output of the external power card is within limits. With the available caption illuminated, the DC external power can be connected to the DC electrical system by pressing the external power push button. Click on the external power push button to continue. When external power has been selected, DC bus 1 and DC bus 2 will be powered by the external DC power. In addition, the associated DC utility bus will be powered through a contactor. It should be noted that in this scenario, DC bus 2 is powered by external power through the bus tie contactor, provided that the bus tie contactor push button is in the normal or released out position. When DC bus 1 is powered, the static inverter override transfer contactor closes, and hot battery transfer contactor opens. This transfers the power source for inverter 1 from the hot main battery bus to DC bus 1. Charging of the batteries can be enabled by means of the two battery charger push buttons. Battery charging is enabled when the associated push button is in the pressed in position. This will cause the associated battery charger contactor to close, and allow external power to recharge the associated battery. Battery charging is controlled by the MFC. This function will be covered later in this module. When external power is supplying the DC system, the standby bus transfer contactor will change the power source for the DC standby bus, 
from the hot main battery bus to the hot emergency battery bus. When DC bus 1 is powered by a generator and external power is removed, the service select bus relay closes, and the service bus transfer relay opens. This shifts the source of power of the DC service bus from external power to DC bus 1. When the engines are running, DC power is supplied by two DC starter generators. These generators function both as a starter during engine start, and as a DC generator when the engines are running. The DC starter generators are driven by the associated engine accessory gearbox. When operating as a generator, these units generate 27 to 31 volts, with a nominal setting of 30 volts. They each output a nominal 12 kilowatts of power. The generators are cooled by air. When an engine is started, a start contactor connects the associated starter generator to either the main battery, DC external power, or the main battery and the opposite generator if it is operating. During a start, both battery charge contactors will open in order to isolate the emergency battery bus from DC bus 1, and the hot main battery bus from DC bus 2. Therefore, the DC standby bus will be supplied by the hot emergency battery bus, and inverter 1 will be powered by the hot main battery bus. This is done to prevent power transients during the engine start. During the sequence, both emergency power indicators will illuminate. If only battery power is available and none of the engines are running, the starter generator is powered by the main battery through the battery start contactor. If external power is available and none of the engines are running, the starter generator is powered by DC external power through the external power contactor. Once an engine is running, the second engine is connected to the main battery and the operating generator, provided the aircraft is on the ground. This is called a cross start. During a cross start, the main battery turns over the starter on the starting engine until NH reaches 10%. At that point, the generator on the running engine will connect to the start bus automatically to assist the start until NH reaches 45%. If a cross start fails for any reason, a single cham sounds. Both master caution lights flash. The amber cross start fail light illuminates on the main electrical power panel. The amber electrical cross start message is displayed on the engine and warning display, or EWD. And, cross start fail is displayed on the MFD engine page. During all starting, when the engine speed reaches 45% NH, the start contactor opens, and the starter generator is no longer cranking the engine. When an engine reaches 61.5% NH, the starter generator acts as a generator. The transition between the start mode and the generator mode is controlled by a generator control unit, or GCU. This GCU opens the start contactor at 45% NH, and closes the generator contactor at 61.5% NH to allow the starter generator to act as a generator. The GCU maintains a constant voltage output and provides fault protection and detection for over or under voltage, over or under speed, differential fault current, generator overload, 
power and fall current limiting, bus tie lockout, reverse current, and equalizing load. When a generator is operating, the associated DC bus will be powered through the associated generator contactor, provided the associated DC generator push button is selected in, and external power is not being used. External power has priority over the engine generators. Therefore, in order to get the engine generators to power the DC buses, the external power push button has to be selected off. This will open the external powder contactor and close both generator contactors. If only one engine is operating and external power is selected off, the operating generator can power both DC buses through the bus tie contactor. This contactor will automatically close, provided the BTC push button is released out. The released out is the normal position of this push button. The position of the contactor is indicated by the green flip bar. This bar is visible when the bus tie contactor is closed. If the flip bar is green and the BTC push button is then depressed, the button will show isolation in white, with both sides of the system then operating independently. After the second engine is started, the bus tie contactor will automatically open, and each generator is now supplying its respective side of the DC system. The green flow bar will then extinguish. The constant frequency AC system consists of a 115 volt AC network and a 26 volt AC network. Power is supplied by two inverters that were discussed earlier in this module. Each inverter is normally powered by the associated DC bus. The inverters require DC power within a range of 18 volts DC to 31 volts DC in order to operate satisfactorily. Each inverter produces 115 volts AC and 26 volts AC at a frequency of 400 Hz. The AC power produced by the inverters is single phase. The 115 volt AC system supplies AC power to systems such as the smoke detector fans and the digital flight data recorder. The list depicted on the screen identifies the systems using 115 volt AC power. The 26 volt DC system supplies systems such as the flap position indicating system and navigation course and heading selection. The screen depicted here shows all the systems that use 26 volt AC power. The 115 volt AC network consists of three buses, AC bus 1, AC bus 2, and AC standby bus. During normal operations, inverter 1 powers AC bus 1 and the AC standby bus. Inverter 2 powers AC bus 2. The two 115 volt AC buses are connected through an AC bus tie relay, which will close automatically in the event one of the inverters fails or is not powered. In the event of a failure of inverter 1, the AC standby bus will be automatically powered by inverter 2. The 26 volt AC system similarly consists of an AC bus 1, AC bus 2, and the AC standby bus. The arrangement and operation of the 26 volt AC system is the same as the 115 volt AC system. Some systems on the aircraft are hydro items and require a different source of AC power. This source is called the AC Walt system which is powered by two propeller-driven AC generators. These brushless generators are air-cooled and deliver 20 kV amps. The reason these generators are called wild is because they generate between 115 and 200 volts of power at a frequency that ranges between 341 and 488 Hz. The frequency depends on the propeller speed.
Each AC wall generator is controlled by a generator control unit, or GCU. The GCU protects the electrical system against AC wall generator faults. Fault protection is provided for over voltage, under voltage, power and fault current limiting, bus tie lockout, differential fault protection, over frequency, under frequency, and open phase. In addition, the GC regulates the voltage output of the generator. Each AC wall generator powers an associated AC wall bus through a generator contactor. The GC will open the contactor in the event a fault has been detected. In the event of a fault, an AC wall bus will be automatically powered by the opposite AC wall bus through two bus tie contactors. AC external power can power both AC wall buses. AC external power is plugged into the airplane electrical system through receptacle located on the right side of the aircraft, just aft of the nose gear. If AC external power is plugged in, the bus power control unit will check the quality of the AC power supplied by the external cart. If the AC power is within limits, the available caption in the AC wild external power push button will illuminate. External power is then connected to the AC wild system by pressing on the push button. Click on the external power push button to continue. AC external power has priority over the engine driven AC wild generators. When AC power is selected, the generator contactors will open and both bus tie contactors will close to allow AC external power to power both AC wall buses. An AC wall service bus normally provides power for high draw items such as the galley and AC wall service plugs. Normally, the AC wall service bus is powered by AC wall bus 1 when the engines are running, or AC external power is used. If the aircraft is unpowered, the AC wild service bus is powered by depressing the ground service bus AC wild push button on the flight attendant panel. This moves a contactor that connects AC external power to the AC wild service bus. The AC wild service bus powers non-essential items. Therefore, the AC wild service bus is automatically shed when one AC wild generator is offline. In the event both engine-driven DC generators have failed, a transformer rectifier unit, or TRU converts AC wild power into DC power. This DC power then powers the DC system, which minimizes the draw on the batteries. In this situation, the TRU will be powering the DC emergency bus, the DC standby bus, the DC essential bus, and inverter one. We will now take an in-depth look at the controls and indicators associated with the electrical system. Most of the electrical system is controlled by the main electrical power panel located on the overhead section of the flight deck. The DC generators are controlled by two push buttons labeled DC Generator 1 and DC Generator 2. When the push button is pressed in, the associated generator will be energized and the associated generator contactor will close provided the GCU determines that the generator output is within limits. Selecting a generator push button to the out position will de-energize the associated generator, and the generator contactor will open. The white off caption will illuminate to indicate that the associated generator is off. The fault caption illuminates in the event the GCU trips the generator due to a fault or if the associated generator contactor opens. You should note that if the contactor opens because the push button was selected to the off position, the fault caption will not illuminate. Regardless of what caused the fault caption to illuminate, the bus tie contactor will close. 
This will cause the affected DC bus to be powered by the operating generator. If the fault caption illuminated because the GCU detected an underspeed of the generator, the generator will reset itself automatically once the generator returns to normal speed. If the fault caption illuminated due to any other GCU protection, the generator would have to be reset by cycling the effective generator push button. The BTC push button controls the operation of the DC bus tie contactor. As we just saw, the failure of one generator will cause the DC bus tie contactor to close, and this will allow the operating generator to power both DC buses. This will occur only if the BTC push button is in the released out position. This is the normal position for this push button. You should note that this push button is guarded to prevent accidental operation of the push button. If the BTC push button is pressed in, the BTC will open, and this will prevent any automatic powering of a DC bus with an inoperative generator. The isolation caption illuminates in the push button when it has been pressed in. The caption is white to indicate it is not the normal configuration. The external power push button controls DC external power. When the available caption illuminates, it indicates that the BPCU has determined that DC external power is of acceptable quality. DC external power is connected or disconnected by pressing the push button. The on caption illuminates when DC external has been selected. The DC service utility bus push button controls the connection of the DC service bus and the utility buses to the associated main DC bus. The normal position of the push button is the pressed in position. In the normal position, the DC service bus and both utility buses are powered, as long as they have not been shut by the BPCU. Release of the push button out disconnects the DC service bus and both utility buses from the main DC bus. The off caption illuminates when the buses are disconnected. The shed caption illuminates when the BPCU senses an overload condition on one of the main DC buses, and at least one utility bus is disconnected from the associated main DC bus. In addition to a shed caption, a single chime will sound, both master caution lights will flash, the amber electrical DC shed message is displayed on the EWD, and an amber shed label is displayed on the MFD electrical page. The DC bus off light illuminates when the associated DC bus is not powered. If a DC bus off light illuminates, a single chime will sound, both master caution lights will flash, an amber electrical DC 1 or 2 message is displayed on the EWD, and an amber DC bus 1 or 2 off label is displayed on the MFD electrical page. The battery charger push buttons control the associated battery charger contactors. When the push button is pressed in, the MFC controls the operation of the associated battery charger contactor. This contactor is normally closed, but the MFC will open it in the event it detects a thermal runaway of the battery. It will also open a battery charge contactor if the associated DC bus voltage is less than 25 volts, or if the battery toggle switches in the override position. The MFC will also open both battery charger contactors during engine start. The contactors will close when the start selector is out of the start or crank position. When a battery charger push button is released out, the associated charge contactor opens, and the off caption illuminates in the push button. The fault caption illuminates amber when the MFC detects a battery overheat, 
or if the charge contactor fails to operate as commanded. In the case of an overheat, the charge contactor will automatically open. If one of the battery charge fault captions illuminate, a single cham sounds. Both master caution lights flash. An amber electrical battery charging message is displayed on the EWD. And, an amber charging fault label is displayed on the MFD electrical page. The battery toggle switch controls the supply of DC power by the batteries. The power arrangement depends on whether the engines are running, or external power is selected. In the on position, the essential bus, the DC standby bus, and inverter one are powered by the main hot battery bus, provided neither engine is running and external power is off. In addition, the DC emergency bus is supplied by the hot emergency battery bus. If the battery toggle switch is on and either or both engines are running, or if external power is selected on, the DC essential bus is powered by the hot main battery bus, and the DC emergency bus and the DC standby bus are powered by the hot emergency battery bus. If the battery toggle switch is in the off position, the DC essential bus, the DC standby bus, and inverter one are isolated from the hot main battery bus. In addition, the DC emergency bus is isolated from the hot emergency battery bus. In this condition, the only powered buses would be the hot emergency battery bus and the hot main battery bus. The override position bypasses the system protections and allows the buses to be supplied by their respective battery. This means that the system will remain configured as in basic mode, the BPCU keeps the DC standby bus connected to the DC essential bus and does not permit it to toggle over to the DC emergency bus. The override position is primarily for use in the event of a dual generator failure, when managing battery power is critical. A guard prevents the override position from being accidentally selected. Two amber flow arrows indicate when either one of the batteries is being discharged by either the DC essential bus or the DC emergency bus. The right arrow illuminates when the DC essential bus or inverter one is powered by the main battery. The left arrow illuminates when the emergency battery is supplying the DC emergency bus or inverter one. The under voltage caption illuminates amber when the DC standby bus voltage is less than 19.5 volts. Normally, the override position of the push button would be selected in the situation. When the override push button is pressed in, the DC standby bus and inverter one will be powered by the source that is supplying the DC emergency bus. When this position is selected, the override caption illuminates in the push button. The override push button enables the transfer of power for the DC standby bus and inverter one from the hot main battery bus to the hot emergency bus. When the push button is released out, the DC standby bus and inverter one will be powered by the source that powers the DC essential bus. The released out position is the normal position of this push button. When the TRU push button is pressed in, the TRU is connected to AC while bus 2. This will illuminate the white on caption. An arrow above the caption illuminates amber when the TRU is supplying DC power to the DC emergency bus, the DC standby bus, Inverter 1, and the DC Essential Bus. The normal position of the TRU push button is released out. In this position, and with one engine driven generator operating, the DC Emergency Bus and the DC Standby Bus are powered by the Hot Emergency Battery Bus, Inverter 1 is powered by DC Bus 1, and the DC Essential Bus is powered by the Hot Main Battery Bus. If the TRU push button is in the normal position and both engine-driven generators are not operating, 
The DC emergency bus is powered by the hot emergency battery bus. Inverter 1, the DC standby bus and the DC essential bus are powered by the hot main battery bus. Battery charging is monitored by the DCM indicator. This indicator will indicate if the selected battery is charging or discharging. The battery selector switch, located under the indicator, is used to select which battery is connected to the indicator. The inverter fault lights monitor the associated inverter. An inverter fault light will illuminate in the event an undervoltage or overvoltage has been detected at the output of the associated inverter. An undervoltage could be caused either by an inverter failure or a loss of power to the inverter. Regardless of the cause, the illumination of an inverter fault light will result in a single chime, both master caution lights will flash, an electrical inverter 1 or 2 message is displayed on the EWD, and an amber fault message appears in the, the associated inverter icon on the MFD electrical page. The bus off-light illuminates in the event the associated AC bus is not powered. In addition to the light, a single chime will sound, both master caution lights will flash, an amber electrical AC 1 or 2 message is displayed on the EWD, and an amber AC bus 1 or 2 off-label is displayed on the MFD electrical page. When the override push button is in the normal position, Inverter 1 is powered by the same source as the one powering the DC essential bus. In addition, the AC standby bus will be powered by Inverter 1. The normal position of this push button is when the push button is released out. Pressing the override push button and selects the override position. In this situation, Inverter 1 is powered by the same source as the DC emergency bus. In addition, the AC standby bus will be powered by inverter 1. When override is selected, the override caption illuminates in the push button. The undervoltage caption illuminates amber when the DC standby bus voltage is less than 19.5 volts. If this caption illuminates, it would be appropriate to use the override position of the push button. The AC Wald system is controlled by the AC Wald electrical power control panel, located on the overhead section of the flight deck. The AC Wald generators are controlled by two push buttons. With a push button pressed in, the associated generator is energized. The associated generator contactor will close, provided that the GCU determines that the generator power output is of acceptable quality. As you may recall, each AC wild generator is controlled by a dedicated GCU. If the AC wild generator push button is released out, the associated generator is de-energized and the associated generator contactor is open. A white off caption illuminates in the push button when the generator is off. An amber fault caption will illuminate in an AC wild generator push button in the event the associated GCU trips the generator to protect the electrical system from any faults. Illumination of the fault light will also trigger an alert. This alert consists of a single chime. Both master caution lights flash. An amber electrical AC wild generator 1 or 2 message is displayed on the EWD. And an amber AC wild gen 1 or 2 fault label is displayed on the MFT AC wild hydraulic page. The fault caption will also illuminate if the associated contactor opens for any reason while the associated AC wild generator push button is pressed in. You should note that the fault caption will not illuminate if a generator push button is released out. If the fault was due to an NP overspeed that lasts less than 3 seconds, or if it was due to a generator underspeed, 
the generator will reset itself automatically. For any other faults, the generator can only be reset by cycling the effective generator push button to off and then back in. The indications of an unpowered AC while buzz consist of a single cham sounds, both master caution lights flash, an amber electrical AC while bus 1 or 2 message is displayed on the EWD. The associated AC while bus off light illuminates in amber. And, an amber AC while bus 1 or 2 off label is displayed on the MFD electrical page. The BTC push button controls the operation of the bus tie contactor that ties the left and right AC while buses together. When the bus tie contactor is closed, the two buses are powered by the operating AC while generator. The normal position of this push button is released out. With normal selected, bus tie contactors 1 and 2 are open and the two AC while buses are powered by their respective AC while generator. With normal selected, the two bus tie contactors will close when only one AC while generator is operating, or if AC external power is being used. The closing of the bus tie contactors is indicated by a flip bar in the BTC push button. Pressing the BTC push button to the in position selects the isolation mode. In this mode, both bus tie contactors open, and will remain open even if one AC while generator fails, or if AC external power is used. As discussed earlier in this module, the DC service bus can be controlled by the ground service bus DC push button on the cabin attendant panel. Placing the push button to the in position will power the DC service bus if a power source is available. In this case, the on caption will illuminate green. The DC service bus is deep powered by releasing out the ground service bus DC push button. This will cause the on light to extinguish. The shed caption illuminates whenever power is available on the aircraft, and the DC service bus push button is released out. The caption will also illuminate if the DC service bus is shed, in the event of an overload condition. The ground service bus AC wall push button is similar to the DC push button. When the push button is pressed in, the AC wall service will be powered whenever AC wall or AC external power is available. In this case, the on caption will illuminate in the push button. The AC wall service bus is depowered by releasing out the AC wall service bus push button. This will cause the green on caption to extinguish. The shed caption illuminates amber if the push button is released out and an AC wall power source is available, or in the event the AC wall service bus is shed due to an overload condition. The lateral maintenance panel incorporates three gauges that display the voltage load and frequency of AC power. A rotary selector is used to connect a specific AC power component to the gauges. The generator position select one of the AC wall generators. An AC wall bus tie contactor selector switch allows maintenance to force open one of the two AC wall bus tie contactors. The switch is guarded to the normal position. In this mode, the AC wall bus tie contactors will function according to the system logic. Synoptic diagrams of the electrical system can be displayed on the MFD. The electrical page shows mainly the AC and DC systems, while the AC wild hydraulic page shows mainly the AC wild system. Each DC generator is indicated by a circle with a DC generator label. The generator number is indicated in that label as well. A green circle means that the associated DC generator push button is selected on and the associated DC generator is operating normally. White indicates that the associated DC generator push button is selected off. Amber indicates a fault. In this condition, an amber fault label is displayed within the circle. 
The status of the DC external power is indicated by a square with a white external power label. A green square with a green available label indicates that external power is available. A blue square with a green available label and blue on label indicates that DC external power is available and selected on. If the available label is not visible, it means that external power is selected but is not available. The square with the BTC label indicates the status of the DC bus tie contactor. A green square indicates the normal condition. A blue square with a white isolation label indicates that the two sides are isolated from each other. The status of each DC bus is indicated by a square with a DC bus label. The bus number is specified in the label. A green square with a gray background indicates that the associated DC bus is on. An amber square with an amber off label means that the associated DC bus is unpowered. Each utility bus is represented by a rectangle with a utility bus label. The bus number is specified in the label. A green rectangle with a gray background indicates that the associated utility bus is on. A white outline on a black background indicates that the utility bus is off. An amber outline indicates a fault in the associated utility bus. The outline and label are replaced with an amber shed label when the utility bus has been shed. The DC service bus follows the same convention as the utility buses. The TRU is represented by a square with two intersecting circles and a TRU label, along with an upward pointing arrow and a Seawald label. The six different possible displays of the TRU, which depend on the status of the TRU push button, the status of the AC Wild Bus 2, and TRU power supply availability, are shown on the screen. The emergency and essential buses are represented by a rectangle with a label to identify the bus. A green outline with a gray background indicates that the voltage on the associated bus is at least 18 volts. An amber outline indicates either an invalid voltage value or the voltage on the associated bus is below 18 volts. The DC standby bus is represented in a similar manner. The difference is that there is a third condition to indicate that the override push button is in the override position. The batteries and their associated hot buses are paired together in a square. Notice that the associated battery voltage is indicated by a numerical value followed by the letter V. A green outline indicates that the associated battery voltage is above 18 volts. If the voltage drops below 18 volts, the battery and hot bus icon is outlined in amber. A blue outline indicates that the battery voltage is greater than 18 volts, and the battery toggle switch is in the override position. The battery voltage is also color-coded, and uses the same color convention as the battery and hot bus icons. There is a third indication represented by two amber dashes. This indicates that the system is sensing an invalid battery voltage. The associated battery charger is also depicted on the synoptic screen. A white square with a white charger off label indicates that the associated battery charger push button is selected off. A green square indicates that the associated battery charger push button is pressed in, and either the associated DC bus is not supplying the battery, or the battery toggle switch is in the override position. If a flow line is visible in the icon, it indicates that the charge contactor is closed with the associated DC bus providing power to the battery, or the battery toggle switch is not in the override position. An amber outline with an amber fault label indicates a fault in the associated charger. An amber arrow indicates an abnormal discharge of the associated battery. A blue battery override label indicates that the battery toggle switch is in the override position. The inverters are represented by a square with an inverter label. 
A green square means that the associated inverter is operating normally. An amber outline with a fault label indicates a fault in the associated inverter. The AC bus icons consist of a green outline with a gray background when the associated AC bus is powered. An amber outline with an amber off label indicates that the associated AC bus is unpowered. The AC standby bus icon follows the same convention, except that there is no off label when this bus is unpowered. The AC wild portion of the electrical system is on the MFD AC wild hydraulic page. This page displays the AC wild generators, buses, and BTC. You will notice that DC bus 2 and the TRU are represented as well. The convention used for the AC wild portion is similar to what was described previously. This concludes the electrical module.